Welcome back. Welcome to the start of a new Tokusasha review series. This is basically reviewing. This is Metal Heroes review episode one. Metal Heroes, yes, the franchise that spawned two different American TV shows. The first one is We Are We Are V R Troopers. Yes, that one, and Big Bad Beetleborgs. Yep. That's what this franchise basically inspired. Now, this is talk about... I'm talking about the very first Metal Hero series. There were technically 17 that were released overall. From 1982 to about 1999. Now, for this review series, for right now, I am only discussing the first four and their movies that come afterwards. That's all I'm doing. I might get back to the series after I finish up more of Kamen Rider Super Sentai. Because Metal Heroes is not that long a franchise. Yeah, it's not It's not currently going right now. So, I can get back to it at some point. But the other two, gotta get back to those. Now, this one basically is talking about the very first one aired in 1982. Space Sheriff Gavin. Which, by the way, he looks like this. Yep, that's him. That's Space Sheriff Gavin. Yep. Yeah, that's the original Mark I suit. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, he is... The the guy's real name, well, his alias on Earth is Rich Suit in, in the Jody. Mm -hmm. Now, in Japan, it's released as Uchu Kenji Gavin, though the American translated name is Space Sheriff Gavin. That's what I'm going to call it, because that's what's pronounced here in the U.S. It aired from March... 5th, 1982, and wrapped up on February 25th, 1983. Now, uh, if I read the reason why they decided to do this, because apparently Toei did not want to do an Arcomrider series, so they decided to do this instead. Now, you basically have a supporting character. This is Mimi, who is Gavin's assistant, who, like Gavin, does bring episode one. He does have a boss, who actually is... Get this. His boss is his assistant's father. Yes. His name is Commander Quinn. Uh, in these early episodes, by the way, I'm only discussing the first eight episodes, but I'm going to go through it basically what I can for the characters, mind you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, we're also introduced to a few characters. One is basically Kondra Otama. Mm-hmm. Yes, he is a photographer who was introduced in episode number uh, two. Yeah, he's a basically a recurring character. Pops up now and again. There's also Gasha Fuji, who's the only Avalon Club. That's the place where Gavin works when basically he's trying to make money while he's on Earth. Because of course he has to do it. There's also Ghostgate and Wanabi. His grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, you probably think, okay, since I talk a little bit about the heroes, what about the villains? They're basically, they're known as the space crime organization, Roku, who are basically sort of space pirates. This is their boss. Meet Don Hor. Yes. Uh, the first time I ever heard this guy's name was actually in the uh, Go Kaiju vs. Space Sheriff Gavin film, which was my introduction to Space Sheriff Gavin. Yep. Yeah, he's got six arms and he cannot move. No, seriously, he cannot freaking move. Uh, they also have Hunter Killer. This is him. He was a former member of the Space Police who betrayed them and basically it all, all relates to uh, Bosser, who is Gavin's father. Uh, his mother's probably going to a little bit later. There's also... Not that one. They do have Horror Girl, who is simply just a woman wearing a bird mask. Yeah. Now, they're basically based in Moroku space. It's his alternate dimension. And their base operation is basically in the Moroku castle. Yep, which, if you're curious, that's what it looks like. Yeah, I'm not kidding. And that little thing that you see on front, that's a mini spaceship they basically go use to go to Earth. 
Now, in the very first episode, we introduced these guys, and the first thing... Now, we do see this sort of this, this, this gigantic space station, which is referred to as a space colony. Yep. And it looks like it's near completion. It looks like it was like one section that will be built. And then, basically, the Moroku just destroyed the damn thing. Yep. Now, this actually is... is the, now, here's the thing. Out of the first episode... The, the space colony, if it gets rebuilt or anything about it, is never brought up again after the opening episode. Scientists in the episode mentioned, well, off screen, mentioned, oh yeah, it was a meteorite who destroyed it. Despite the fact it was aliens. Yes, the scientists were stupidly. But here's the thing. The space police are not going to be stupid. They're going to be pretty smart. Most in the case of episode one, it just introduced to pretty much the cast of characters, a big attack on Earth, and basically just, well, something that will basically play a lot in some of the episodes. A lot of the episodes end generally the same way, where Gab was telling the monster of the episode, and he dragged the Moroku space to fight the monster, and later on, of course, the Devilmen. He also basically fights their fighters, of course. Mm-hmm. Because, of course, they got freaking fighters. Yep. Now, in the case of... What, um... Oh, by the way, he's seen driving a Jeep on the other so it's good Jimmy. Yep. Now, in the case of what he pilots, per se... By the way, the grunts are known as the crushers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the crushers, which are simply guys wearing like suits, like not like biz suits per se, but they're basically kind of like gangsters, like monobag gangsters wearing jackets. If you're curious, that's the crushers. Yeah, I'm like, really? Okay, this is different. Yeah, just guys wearing leather jackets. I mean. And, that, and now the monster we see in these eight episodes. Now we also have over six introduced to like one, two, three, four, five different monsters in just episode six alone. The first episode is Shunko Monster. You have Gamera Monster, Condor, Sasori, Dokoju, Okanamaru, Bone, Plant, Bat, Jellyfish, Samurai, basically uh, is also a monkey, and Kanjo Monster. Nine does not have a monster. Nope, it doesn't. Now, oh, by the way, the name of the fortress that Gavin uses in this series. It's known as a Doggerin. And like in the case of, well, this is basically what a thing looks like. Yeah, and like in the case of Spaceship Gavin, that movie, uh, Go Ahead or Spaceship Gavin, uh, that was my introduction to say. Now, if you're curious about a thing at the bottom, that's also Gavin's personal Zord, which you can transform into a dragon to basically battle the the the, the fighters that the Moroku group have, and also he uses it to well, it he uses the basically he also uses his own spaceship basically to travel out. Now here's the thing, he, he's never shown to have a particular place where he lives per se in the city. Because he has a spaceship. So he does technically need this place to live. Also typical for Japan. He does get a paycheck. But only only about once a month. Now the paycheck first is brought up in episode 4. When he gets it. He's only paid 3,000 yen. Which if you're curious though. 3,000 yen is equivalent to 3 dollars. In US currency. And the reason why. Because he kept basically. Uh, leaving work to go fight. Well. The Moroku, which boss boss doesn't know that yet. Oh, in case you're curious, though, when does the public get aware of Space Shark Gavin's existence? That doesn't happen in episode 8, mind you. Yes. Though, throughout these episodes, they're basically doing various things, like, like, take out the, the, the vocal crimes basically raised to robbery. At one point, Gavin is shot in episode 6. So, Mimi has to contact Bird Planet. That's where, and it is brought up that Gavin's mother's from Earth. His father's from Bird Planet. Now, you're probably thinking, Bird Planet, does the, do they transform people? The birds? Well, Mimi does transform to a parakeet. Even at one point, hides herself in Gavin's clothes. 
So, oh, by the way, Gavin is played by, well, the guy who was Denzi Blue in Denzi Man and Battle Kenya from By a Favorite Jay. Yep. This was the next thing he did after uh, Denzi Man wrapped up. Great to see this guy again. I mean, I, I really enjoy the, the guys, basically, like, his his, his his chemistry with a lot of the cast. Is, and, and typical for him, he's always surrounded by kids. A lot of the time, though he does have love for animals. They do. They actually display that in episode six, I believe it was, where they they actually save a group of uh, a puppies from nearly drowning in a river. Yep. Now, in the case of some of these other episodes, aside from episode six, dealing with like a robbery per se, mm -hmm. you probably thinking, okay, what about the other ones? Well, 2 is basically mostly about them stealing oil tankers. Yes, seriously, that's what the thing is called. Uh, in the case of 3, it's basically it's of the BEM project. This is injection of BEMs, per se. And they kind of become a reoccurring thing throughout this whole entire thing, the BEMs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, 4 is basically the whole thing where he gets... Thing. Uh, five basically is when it's shot. Uh, the genius one. This one feels a lot like something I've seen in Denzi Man and Gogol 5, where you have the crime syndicate, or the, these villains of the series, brainwashing children to basically go to their school or whatever. And this all involves eating lots of octopus. Yeah, it's kind of a weird one, this one is. Yes, by the way, when the Gavin shot the text episode 5. Yes. Uh, 7 is. Basically, the robbery one. That was one used to puppies. Yes. But in the case of episode four, it's all about some mysterious helmet that basically powers things up. Yeah, that's most of what that episode is. I kind of actually slept through part of it because basically it was very tired this morning. And in the case of episode eight, despite the fact this is the first public introduction to Gavin in this series, now he is framed for kidnapping children. No, seriously, that is what the they're playing. The basically, Morocco for episode A is plan is this. Okay, they want to form this space magazine that spread UFOs, and of course, Gavin sees them, and the Morocco fires obviously, and then they interview him. He goes to like the place, of course. Then of course, they frame for kidnapping children. They refer to him as a villain, despite the fact that kids basically say, "Yeah, that's a, that's a big fat lie." He actually saved us. He has saved her for falling off a dam. Yep. And, well, they follow her his name. Also, when, when he goes to the Moroccan dimension, he also brings along his little, his flat motorcycle he brings along with him. Which looks like a giant bed. Apparently, it's his personal vehicle he has. Like his personal combat vehicle, while the van, the, the Zuki Jenny, that's actually his civilian vehicle. This, uh, and, and he also explained, well, except for two episodes... Mostly put the suit he wears is actually his combat suit. Yes, his combat suit. That he they, they, they do explain this. Of course, this was also brought up in the Spaceship Guy movie. The that was my first introduction. Like a lot of the, a lot of that movie was basically my backdoor to the series. Where they explain that this is like it looks like it's insane when he does this little transformation sequence. It takes fifty milliseconds basically to transform where he just says the catchphrase, goes to the ship. Roger that and a teleport and bam. They also have a thing where also in the episode at one point he was actually temporarily blinded, but he's gonna fix by the end of the episode. So the one way to know the fact that he's actually the thing is on is basically the red there's like a little bit of lights in the suit. Now where the suit comes from, a side effect of the Gavin ship, it's not really gonna really explore very well in here. Also in Gavin's frame for kidnapping children, his boss, now normally series would have this written badly by having the boss immediately having him either called or basically ordering his arrest despite the fact there's no evidence to matter. Here he's like, yeah, we gotta we we we, we gotta prove this says right away. He's basically on Gavin's side the whole time, which I do like that. I'm glad that that was not the not the stupid trope of oh he basically just did that for some stupid reason. But this actually was pretty good here. Now Mimi, like I said, is Commander Quinn's daughter a couple times first to him as Papa because this only happens in episode 6 and 8 it doesn't really happen very much in the thing of course 
it's obvious now. As for why, and of course, also in episode uh, five, when Gavin is, is shot, we actually have Marnie bring along the bird, uh, the bird formula to cure him. Now, here's the thing: normally, a a scene written like this, where the Morocco fires probably hear about this and they intercept it. Here, nope. He's, she's able to fly the ship, no problem. Yeah, fly the ship, give him the cure, because he's shot by a bullet that's got cobra venom in it, which apparently like 200 times the limit, and cures him. And it takes him a bit, but he does recover. Probably because he's half bird, bird, bird man or whatever. Which I gotta admit, there's actually a really good change of pace here. Yep. And they have the episode in comedic fashion where he, she wants that once again by her address that's basically 83,000 yen. Which, okay, I'm gonna look it up here. Like, how much is that in U.S. currency? In the case of our current currency, let's see. That is equivalent to, uh, as of current day currency, it is $591.99. It's basically $592. I'm like, wow, that's kind of expensive dress. So basically, in order to get Gavin to buy it for her, she pawns off one of her rings, which apparently the, the jeweler has never seen this ring before. So she gives, he gives her a big, like, a very thin briefcase full of money. You are like, oh, crap, there's lots of money here. He's like, okay, he drags him inside, uses this money to buy her this dress. And then she goes back off. Yeah. But I gotta say, really good start for this particular series. And I'm looking forward to... Now, here's the thing. I am going to go straight to episode 22, and I'm going to stop there. The reason why I'm going to stop there, because I'm going to be taking a brief break from the series. I can leave all my Tokusasha stuff. But what am I going to do? Well, I'll view it here. I'm going to be basically doing Plunder at that point. Yes, Plunderer. Now, unlike in the case of The Great Job with Defeated, where the dub is still airing, that one, no. The whole series is dubbed, so it's been out there for several years now. So, I'll be able to go through it, no problem. Okay, so, that's a particular view. Uh, I might save my comic corners to a little bit later after my stream tonight, because I got a stream due in about 12 minutes. So, I'll do this in the next video. Bye.